words like a crowded party, we've seen the pictures. They look like the worst parties I've ever been to in my entire life. But at that point, but at that point, we. But you have to remember the context of this. You're absolutely right. It's not a rave. There's not 300 people in a room. However, we 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 no. But hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We've got to remember the context, Paul. We have to remember the context. We weren't allowed to meet family. Grandparents weren't allowed to hug children. Families were separated. These were different times. And then people see these photos that have been submitted as evidence to this parliamentary inquiry, showing people not socially distanced with huge amounts of alcohol. And let's not forget Boris Johnson huge when he was Prime alcohol. Minister. What, what, this, this... Huge amounts of alcohol. Where were the huge amounts of alcohol? Is Boris Johnson reading the same preliminary report as the rest of us? I think if you independently went and tried to explain what's happening in British politics and what's happened over the last year to anyone who had nothing or no understanding of British politics, you would sound utterly ridiculous. Let's try and understand what's happening here. We've got a privileges committee, which is make, taking a view, producing a report, which is based uh, in part on the evidence from Sue Gray, a woman who's just now gone to work for the leader of the opposition. I mean, this would be laughable if it wasn't so serious. And this, as I say, in part led to the downfall of a prime minister that was elected with an 80 seat majority, a mandate to change this country. I mean, it would be, it, 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 it would it's ludicrous if it wasn't so serious. The point is on Sue Gray, before her appointment, politicians from all sides, MPs, were saying this woman is beyond reproach. She is absolutely the perfect person to do this. She will not be lent on. Everybody thought she did a great job. And to be fair, Boris Johnson came out and said that her report had vindicated him anyway. So why does he have to worry if, if Sue Gray is, is popping over to the Labour Party, which we don't actually know yet if that is going to be confirmed? Well, I mean, I think we know an approach has been made. She's resigned. Sure, but it might not be allowed, service. might it? It might well, not be allowed. She, she's resigned from the civil service to go and work for the leader of the opposition. And I think the Labour Party has got plenty of questions to ask. Um, Keir Starmer's got plenty of questions to answer around when he first approached Sue Gray. But, I mean, it just doesn't pass the optic test, does it, really? Let's be honest. She's now going to work for the leader of the opposition. I mean, as I say, if it wasn't so serious, this would be laughable. I mean, the thing with Sue Gray's report is there's not opinion in there. Um, it's all based on evidence and fact. You know, the, the, the witnesses that gave evidence to her said that there had been partying till three o'clock in the morning the night before Prince Philip's funeral. They brought suitcases of booze into Downing Street. People had got so drunk they'd broken the Prime Minister's son's swing in Downing Street. That's not an opinion of Sue Gray. That is evidence that she collated and indeed anyone could have collated. Yeah, well, Boris Johnson wasn't at those parties, was he? I mean, we've seen photos of the supposed parties that Boris Johnson was at. A few soggy sandwiches from Sainsbury's and a, and a slice of birthday cake. If that's what's supposed to be uh, a party, then I think it was a pretty poor party. And I don't but, think anyone, as I say, independently uh, would look at those photos and think to themselves that this was an um, example of misdemeanours going on in Parliament. The whole thing's ludicrous. Oh, sorry, in Downing Street, the whole thing's ludicrous. Well, well let's have a look at some of the information that has been um, reported in The Times today. One witness to this parliamentary committee said that Boris Johnson told a crowded event, so not a one-to-one, -one, a crowded event at number 10 in November 2020, that this was probably the most unsocially distanced gathering in the UK. And then an official told a colleague that worries about leaks regarding the PM having a proverbial that you may well have in a brewery were not unwarranted. The Prime Minister was fighting COVID. The Prime Minister was working night and day along with other people in Downing Street to try and get jabs into people's arms, to try and open up the economy and to try and ensure that we have the freedom, quite frankly, that you and I are both uh, enjoying right now. And, you know, words like a crowded party, we've seen the pictures. They look like the worst parties I've ever been to in my entire life. But at that point, but at that point we, but you have to remember the context of this. You're absolutely right. It's not a rave. There's not 300 people in a room. However, well, there we go. We, so we, we no, but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We've got to remember party. the context, Paul. We have to remember the context. We weren't allowed to meet family. Grandparents weren't allowed to hug children. Families were separated. These were different times. And then people see these photos that have been submitted as evidence to this parliamentary inquiry 
scary, showing people not socially distanced with huge amounts of alcohol. And let's not forget Boris Johnson, huge when he was Prime Minister... What, what, this, this... Huge amounts of alcohol. Where were the huge amounts of alcohol? At that Have you party? not seen these pictures? It was a few soggy, sa- it was a few soggy sandwices. Right, I'm looking at one picture and slice, here. And a, slice of, and a slice of bread. Well, you've asked me a question. Let me answer. No, of course. And, and you've asked me a question. Let, let me answer. Of course, yeah, yeah. My part... If you want to talk, that's up to you. But if you've asked me a question, please let me answer it. My father died during COVID, okay? And I'm not trying to pretend that I've got any right to speak about this above anybody else. A lot of people suffered uh, during COVID. A lot of workplaces had to continue due to COVID. No, most of notably schools, hospitals, etc. And, of course, Downing Street is part of that as well. And, of course, a slice of birthday cake at um, someone's party. This was not some sort of party. This was not some sort of huge social gathering and try and pretend that it was and somehow that this was evidence of, of partying late into the night in Downing Street. I, I just think anyone who looks at it would, would, would reach a different conclusion. The photo I'm looking at, there are four opened bottles of, I don't know, champagne or Prosecco. It's difficult to see. There's lots of bottles of beer. Um, there's other ones where there is potentially a bottle of spirits on the table. Certainly lots of open bottles of wine. So there's a considerable amount of alcohol. And in fact, let's not forget that the Metropolitan Police fined the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, for attending well, well, a lockdown party. that that That's a fact, isn't it? Well, let, 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 well I think anyone could uh, would look at those parties, look at those photos, and perhaps reach a different conclusion. It's like the worst party I would have ever been to in my entire life. And then you look at what happened with Keir Starmer swigging booze uh, at a party, at a gathering in uh, Durham. And I think uh, the police, at the very least, can be uh, accused of taking an inconsistent approach. So you think that the police got this wrong? I think the police have got... Uh, well, look, the police have made their own judgment. That's entirely up to them. But I think it's fair to say they've made an inconsistent approach. I mean, Keir Starmer, it's clear to say, was um, eating and drinking after he had been working for the day, which, um, you know, is what the police... Right, okay, so, but that's what the police but, accepted. I wasn't part of the police investigation. Uh, you uh, weren't uh, part uh, of the uh, police uh, investigation. Uh, they gathered the evidence. We have to believe in the police, I, I would imagine, in this country. Are you trying to suggest that a gathering during work time with people who were trying to get us through COVID, were trying to get jabs into our arms, were trying to ensure that we enjoy, we enjoy the same freedoms that we, we enjoy now, get us back to that point, is somehow different to um, Keir Starmer, who was clearly campaigning, was clearly campaigning, eating curry, forgot that Angela Rayner was actually there, and swigging beer. Somehow the, these, two, uh, these two approaches are different. Well, look, I mean, I, can, I think anyone independently and empirically looking at the evidence would say this was an inconsistent approach by the police. But it doesn't really matter. What's really important here is that we've got a prime minister who was elected with an 80-seat majority. And in part, he's been brought down by a report, which is now a report, sorry, compiled by now the um, chief of staff for the leader of the opposition. Anyone looking at this, would, would it doesn't pass the sniff test. The whole thing is utterly ludicrous. And anyone looking at it in, independently would reach the same conclusion. Boris Johnson actually resigned, didn't he, over the Chris Pincher affair, though, really, and the fact that he said he didn't know that he had um, previously had allegations of misconduct against him when actually then someone came out and said he did, and then people started to resign. Do you think, of course, we mustn't forget here that Rishi Sunak, as Prime Minister, could potentially block Sue Gray's appointment, certainly delay it, possibly for up to two years, potentially stop it altogether. Do you think that's what the Prime Minister should do, that he should block Sue Gray from going to work for the Labour Party? Well, I think the Prime Minister will do what uh, he, he thinks is right. And my advice to him would be uh, the same advice that I've given you here today. But you've just said there that the Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister resigned over the Chris Pincher scandal. Yes, of course, that's right. But to try and suggest that this entire media surface that was focused around Partygate for months and months before had no bearing on that decision whatsoever. I mean, I, I just think that's absurd. Thank you so much for watching. You get extra points for making it all the way to the end of the video. And if you want to see more from me, Chloe and Callum, you can join us every Friday to Sunday on Times Radio from 6am.